Devontae Parker is one of those players that will frustrate you, as a fan, for weeks and then, he gets on the field and quiets the crowd. Miami Dolphins fans have grown tired of Parker's on and off again addition to the injury report, the injured reserve list, and the inactive list. He isn't reliable when it comes to staying healthy but when he is, he can quickly silence the doubters. Parker was impressive on Sunday. He had two incredible catches and key points in the game. He contorted his body in a way that made no sense. Had the mindset to not only focus on ball control but foot placement. On one play, we still can't figure out how he actually was able to come down with the ball in bounds. Parker has always been a stellar talent and when he is on the field, he is close to perfect. He rarely drops passes and is a clutch playmaker. Still, the problems with Parker is not the talent or lack of, it's his inability to stay healthy. If Parker joins the injury report before the next game, it will be of no surprise. In fact, many fans simply expect it. Parker was healthy on Sunday and he played an important role in the game. Now he has a week off before the team begins to prep for the New York Jets when they return from the bye week. That will be plenty of time to get him to 100% if he isn't quite there. On Sunday, Parker reminded us why the Dolphins invested so much in him and fans were reminded how exciting it is to watch him play on Sundays. Tua was reminded what it is like to have another weapon at his disposal. Two Miami Dolphins players break team rookie records on Sunday. The Miami Dolphins have been the target of criticism this year and Chris Greer has been in the crosshairs quite a bit, but his draft picks are paying off. On Sunday, the Dolphins and their fans witnessed not one, but two rookie records fall. What's more impressive is that the records fell in only the 13th week of the season. Jalen Waddell broke the single-season receptions record for a rookie eclipsing Jarvis Landry's 74. Waddell now has 86 receptions on the season and is targeting another Chambers record, receiving yards. He should get that in the next game or two. Chambers had 883 yards and Waddell now sits at 849. Waddell is also taking aim at the NFL. His 86 receptions is good enough for second in the entire NFL and he holds that second place with Keenan Allen and Tyreek Hill. Cooper Cup leads the league with 100 receptions. Over on defense, Jalen Phillips broke the Miami Dolphins rookie sack record when he sacked Mike Glennon twice on Sunday. Phillips now has 8.5 sacks on the season and the half sack allowed him to move ahead of Bill Stanfill and Lorenzo Bramell. Phillips has at least a half sack in each of the past five games including three against the Panthers and two against the Giants. While we talk about Phillips and Waddle, the one rookie not breaking records may very well be the best of the three. Javon Holland continues to be an impressive rookie with clear leadership qualities in the deep secondary. We may dog Greer for his failures to fix the offensive line and his inability to sign quality free agents without overspending, but many of his draft picks are starting to produce and this past draft may turn out to be one of the best in franchise history. Dolphins may not make the playoffs but questions are being answered. The Miami Dolphins' road to the postseason is going to be long and one hiccup could put the nail in their coffin. Still, a five-game winning streak is helping to answer questions about the team. There have been plenty of questions this year from the future of Tua Tungavailoa to the futures of both Brian Flores and Chris Greer but no matter what happens now, we might have a better idea of how this plays out moving forward. The biggest remaining question is the future of Tua Tungavailoa. Will he be around to start the 2022 season? That's a question that none of us can answer with any certainty. The truth is that no matter what we believe to have been fact in terms of the Deshaun Watson rumors, they are not going to go away once the season is over. In fact, barring an entry into the postseason and maybe even a win by Tua, the talk will resurface. Will anything happen with Watson and the Dolphins? No idea but if Miami was close enough to pull the trigger that Stephen Ross wanted to speak with him prior to the trade deadline, then we have to be aware that Miami could still move on from Tua. This is one of the big questions left unanswered and we won't get an answer until March at the earliest. The future of Brian Flores is a lot less muddy now. The Dolphins could fall flat the rest of the year and Flores will be safe. He has turned around a defense that was sputtering through the first half of the season. Some believe that he has taken over the defensive play calling. If that is true, it has made a huge difference. Xavier Howard told media that the Dolphins were playing like they were last year, system and scheme-wise. There has been a marked difference on that side of the ball since the Ravens upset. Flores has proven he can coach at this level and while he still has a lot to learn, he may be one of those coaches that just needs a little more time. He has to get the offense fixed because the dual offensive coordinator's approach isn't working and the Dolphins' offense remains consistently inconsistent. That brings us to Chris Greer. Miami fans were calling for him to be fired mid-season and while many fans still maintain that line of thinking, 
Greer 2021 draft is looking amazing and that alone is enough to keep him safe for another season. I would venture to guess that in the hierarchy of who will be on the hot seat first that Greer would find his chair warmer than Flores will. Greer still has to fix the offensive line without question and he needs to invest a lot of money in that area. He also is going to make a lot of fans mad if he doesn't get Mike Jasicki and Emmanuel Ogba back under contract after the season. Greer's biggest problems is that he doesn't hit often with his free agent signings and that too needs to change but for now, Greer is off that warmed seat and back in the driver's chair. Not that in Steven Ross's eyes he ever was in jeopardy.